beautiful to see our children listening to God, listening to Jesus, hearing his voice. And we're going to get into that concept, that idea more this morning. Before we dig in to our series and the message this morning, I do need to make a quick announcement about our stage. So if you notice some caution tape, which is there, and the fact that it's like ripped up, we are renovating this room, and today we're renovating the stage, and I just want to say we're really excited about it. We're excited about what the end product will be, and a huge thank you. Pretty much all the work, most of the work, is being done in-house. Um, so as I've been in through the week, I see people in here every day working on this project. So thank you so much to all our volunteers who are working on this stage. And also, if you have children, I'm speaking to myself, um, just be careful with the kids coming in here today, um, and just being up here is probably not the safest thing. So let's, before we begin, start out with prayer. So if you would just close your eyes with me, let's just invite the Holy Spirit in this place. So God, I just, man, we love you. Jesus, we love you. And Holy Spirit, I know that you're here. You promised to be here, but I just pray that you would come in an, a really special way today. I pray that people today who are just feeling burdened and overwhelmed, I pray that you would take those feelings, that you would listen to them, God, and that you would bring just peace. Would you fill us with your peace? Lord, would you help us to understand and to know how much you truly love us and that you never, ever, ever leave so God, would you come? I pray that you would take this time and that you would help us to hear what it is you want us to hear this morning. In your name we pray, amen. So our series that we are in is called Happy Together. Last week, Amos kicked it off and he talked about friendship. If you missed that, you can go on our website and listen to his message from last week. Basically, this series is um, helping us to understand what are happy, healthy relationships. What do they look like? And where is Jesus in all of this, right? And so today, what I propose to you is, get ready, happy, healthy relationships are born out of happy, healthy listeners, good listeners. If you are a good listener, chances are you have really good, healthy relationships. So that is where we are headed today. Happy, healthy relationships come from happy, healthy listeners. So you're sitting here wondering, hmm, am I a good listener? Well, let's find out. I have a quiz for you. This morning it is only three questions, which is both good and bad, because if you miss one question, you fail, right? Um, but really, you're not being graded. Um, so we can go ahead and put up Question number one, it's already up, perfect. So, you meet a friend at Starbucks. She tells you about how lonely she is feeling because she's lost loved ones and friends. So, do you A, give her tons of great advice, right? Tell her awesome, great advice, like here is how you make good friends, and here's how you replace those people you've lost, right? Here's some great advice. And then maybe you spend some time like pumping her up about how great she is and like, you're gonna make new friends so fast, la la la, that's A. B, you tell her she's being ridiculous, right? You tell her, look, you have tons of friends, you have tons of people in your life, you're not really lonely, right? That's B. Or C, you say, ouch, it sounds like you're really feeling alone. And then you just, let her talk, right? Okay, what would you pick? Oh, lovely. <clears throat> I did hear an A, but it's okay. <clears throat> She's only six. Good try. Um, C, yes, right? That is a characteristic of a really good listener. Why is that a good choice? Because that is empathy gold. It is golden to jump into a person's emotional world and say, oh, I think you're feeling this. To be able to step kind of into their shoes and say, yeah, ouch, that really would hurt if I lost these people in my life. 
Great. So, so far you all have an A. Question number two. Your coworker opens up with you over lunch break and shares that he caught his son with drugs. He mentions feeling like a failure as a father. Do you A, try to solve his problem by recommending some great rehab facilities, and maybe you want to jump in there and say, oh, there's this great resource called Focus on the Family. It'll help you be a better dad, right? B, do you say to him, look, don't feel like a failure. And then maybe explain to him, look, it's not your fault at all. Kids these days are a mess. Do you see? Reflect his feelings by saying something like, that sounds really painful. What a difficult situation. I can only imagine how you're feeling. Tell me more. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer is C. C. Very good. Excellent. This isn't hard at all. You are really good listeners. Yes, empathy gold to jump into his shoes, realize like, yeah, ow, that really is hard. Um, and just to say that, say what you think he's feeling and let him continue. Great. Last question. Your daughter comes home from school in tears because she was picked last in gym class. Do you, A, sit her down, tell her this long elaborate story about how you were in middle school once and the same thing happened to you and on and on and on about your own story, right? Like just shine the spotlight on yourself, help her forget her feelings, right? A, B, do you explain to her that God is teaching you a lesson, girl, right? God's teaching you a lesson. You know there's this guy in the Bible named Zacchaeus, wee little guy. He had no friends. Um, and you just explain how this is like God teaching you something, right? That's B. <laughs> Do you see? This is tricky. Be careful, right? Because that's the Bible. All right, C. Do you give her a hug and say, oh, honey, I'm sorry. That must have really hurt Tell me more about how that feels, right? And then just let her talk. So answer, great, awesome, good job. Easiest quiz you've ever had. Excellent job. Um, yes, those are qualities of a good listener, right? There is a time and a place for advice and counseling. There is a time and a place to say, hey, I've been through that too. Let me share my story. There is a time and a place. And I'm not saying those are wrong, but I'm saying your first step in a happy, healthy relationship, your first step should be, shh, just listen, right? Just let the person talk and try really hard to enter into their emotional world. That should be your first step, right? So most of us can probably relate to all of this about listening, right? So this past week, I was talking with a friend, and he was sharing about something really difficult he's going through, and I totally messed up and said, my brother went through that exact same thing, and I just like spotlight, spotlight. It was terrible, right? And the conversation did not go well. I did not help him in any way by sharing that story. I really should have just said, that sounds really hard. Just tell me how you're feeling. And then um, I get this phone call on Friday, one of those phone calls you do not want from your doctor, right? The one that says, I'm so sorry that I have to tell you this, but your biopsy came back and it is, um, so for me it's melanoma. And I just, I know it's treatable and I'm gonna be fine, but I just could not, I just don't wanna walk this road right? Like, I don't want to go meet a surgeon on Monday, and I just don't want to walk this path. And so I was, Frank and I told the kids, and my son had empathy gold. He, like, just listened, and we explained it, and then uh, a little while later, he came up, and he said, Mommy, I wish I could just hug it right out of you. And it was so sweet, because it was like, I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he understood that I wasn't afraid. I'm not afraid. I just don't want to deal with it. But somehow he understood mommy just doesn't want to deal with this, right? Like who wants to be sick? Um, and so to just say, I wish I could just hug it away was beautiful, 
right? It made me feel like he cares and he loves me. And I would have just spilled it if he wasn't eight, right? Or my son. Um, But it was empathy gold. We all can probably relate to these moments in our lives where people have listened well to us, where people maybe haven't listened well to us. Moments in our lives when we can think back and remember like, wow, I listened really well in this situation, or I didn't. Listening is key to happy, healthy relationships. So knowing that this relates to our lives, what does the Bible have to say about this? Right? What does the Bible have to say? So first, I like did my big Bible search. Like, I'm going to find every verse in the Bible that talks about the importance of listening, right? Well, I would have been there for weeks. Um, and I did find a couple favorites that I do have to share with you because they kind of make me laugh. But um, Proverbs is full of fantastic advice about listening well. And um, one that I found was Proverbs 10, verse 19. It says, too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. (laughs) Right? Like, that's beautiful, Solomon. How practical. It doesn't get much better than, like, just keep your mouth shut. Brilliant. Um, And there's so many more examples in the Bible of just, shh. It is better to say less. Right? It's all throughout. And then I realized the entire Bible and its entire rescue plan really is about listening. So from the beginning of time, right, God creates us, first of all, with two ears and one mouth. Right? Get it? Two ears, one mouth? Okay. More listening, less talking. Um, But the whole Old Testament, right, is about God saying, Listen to me, people. Listen to me. I love you. I love you. Listen to me. And it's about these people turning their backs and not. They would rather talk. They would rather engage in their worlds than have anything to do with God. Right? And so God says to them over and over, listen. Stop talking. Listen to me. I love you. Return to me. Right? And finally... Time passes, passes, passes. Finally, God is like, they are not listening. I have to do something drastic. I have to send my son and let him die so that these people can return to me. Right? So he sends Jesus, and what does Jesus do? Jesus says, listen to me. I love you. Stop talking. Listen to me. I love you over and over and over, so much so that he gives up his life so that we can return to relationship with God. Listening is all throughout this Bible. Today, we are going to focus in on one particular passage. It is from the book of James. So if you have your Bibles or your apps, you can turn to James chapter one with me, I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, So what I am going to do is I am going to pull only three verses. This is not my favorite thing to do. Really, I would like to read the entire book of James to you so that you can see the real picture, but I do not have time for that. So I need to give you a little bit of background. James, we believe the author to be Jesus' brother. So Jesus had multiple brothers. James was one of them. In the beginning, James was like, uh, who is this dude? Eventually, James was like, oh yes, he is the savior of the world, the Messiah. When Jesus dies, James becomes the leader of the church in Jerusalem. So James is like a pastor, and he writes this letter. Um, I was doing some research on it, and someone said, this book of James is like the Proverbs of the New Testament. So it is like a list of great advice. And if you read the whole book, you will see a flow, but mostly James is like this list of great advice, okay? And so we're jumping in at the beginning of James where he's giving great advice about listening. So we will jump in at verse 19. I'm gonna read 19 to 21, and then I'm gonna go verse by verse and just take out some little treasures from it, and then we'll apply it to our lives. It says this, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, 
slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. Hmm. Looking at that, first it took me a while to understand. Why does James tell us to be quiet and then ends with this part about humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts because it can save your soul? He goes from like just really clear Shh, be quiet and listen to people to saving our souls. So we'll get there in a second. I think I understand what he was doing. He's taking human relationships first and bringing us down to relationship with God. And so that's also what I'm going to do today. We'll talk about human relationships and then relationship with God. So verse 19, let's dig in for a second. He says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. Now this word, first of all, James... He is Jewish, but they are living in a world where Greek is spoken. So there's Greek and Roman culture. He is also Jewish, but he did not write this in Hebrew. He wrote it in Greek. And so this word first, understand this, comes from a Greek word, iste, and it means to know something, but not just to know it, to know it with the resulting knowledge being of utmost importance. Also, something special about this word, in Greek, their verbs have incredible meaning. If you speak another language, you know that there's not always a perfect translation for words in other languages. So in Greek, this verb, what it really means to say is not just know it once, understand it once. It's in the perfect tense, which means know it now, and let it have an effect for the rest of your life. Know it now, and let that impact your life forever. Okay, so what, if we wanted to translate it a little better, I would have said maybe like, know this now, and keep on knowing it forever. Right? Like, it just has a little more impact. So James doesn't want you to just be like, eh, it's no big deal. Right? Like, be quick to listen and slow to speak. No, he wants you to make it a habit. Right? Make it a habit out of your life every day. Be quick to listen, be slow to speak, and be slow to anger. This word must is better translated right now. It's really important. You must right now be doing these things. Okay? Great. And... Anger, he puts this in verse 20, he makes this connection with listening well and anger, right? So what is that about? Well, if you think about your own lives, think about a time you were talking with somebody, probably your spouse, this is where it happens for me, where you should be listening to your spouse, right? But maybe you're not listening so well, maybe you're talking a little bit more. Where does the argument always lead? Anger, right? When we talk too much, Often, anger is the fruit of too much talking. So that's where James is going here. Um, when he talks about human anger, that kind of anger is not just a one-time explosion, right? I have those, believe it or not. I know I look sweet, but I have these, like, explosive anger moments. He's talking about just a consistent, quick-tempered temperament, right? Like, He's advising us, like, human anger, that's where we're just consistently kind of quick-tempered. That's not what we want, and that's not from God. Great. And then verse 21, just want to point out one thing that could be a little confusing here. It says, humbly accept the word. Well, what word is he talking about, right? The scriptures, yes, they had, um, they had some scriptures. They had the Old Testament, so sure, maybe he's talking about that. But oftentimes in the New Testament, when you see word, you connect that to Jesus. In the book of John, it explains to us that Jesus is the word. He's called the word. And so what James is referring to here is this, is Jesus and the whole rescue plan. This idea that Jesus has come, that he saves us. Keep that planted in your heart because Jesus is the only one, 
that good news about Jesus is the only thing that actually saves your soul, right? So all of this is advice is wonderful. Please be slow um, to speak. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is that Jesus saves your soul. Beautiful. Thank you for following along with me in that. I want to take that now and apply it to our lives. So this is all well and good, you say, but I'm still struggling, struggling a little bit with being a good listener, right? Like, can I have some practical tips? I'm so glad you asked. You can have some practical tips. I want to show you a, an incredible video. I love this video. It is an example of very good listening. So I want you to watch that first, and then we'll go a little further into it. So enjoy this video. I forgot to give you a little background on that video, but obviously you saw it is from a show called Young Sheldon. And Sheldon, the little boy, um, he's about nine or 10, and he really struggles with social, anything social. And so he had asked his professor, he's in like takes college classes, he's brilliant, what he should do for this friend who is like just struggling. Um, and so you saw how he worked that out, right? And you saw how beautiful, like that girl, I want to cry with her, right? Like, and all Sheldon said to her was, first of all, what do you mean, right? That was brilliant. Just ask that simple question. Tell me more. What, what do you mean? And then he said three beautiful words. That sounds hard, right? If you take away anything, take that with you. Just say, that sounds hard. Or whatever they're feeling. That sounds fill in the blank. And I'll tell you, sometimes when I do this, I'm wrong. I'll say, that sounds hard. And they'll be like, that's not hard. But then they'll say, it's really, and they'll continue. So even if you're wrong, it's OK. It just keeps the ball rolling right? So Sheldon gives us a lesson of just empathy gold, right? That sounds hard. That sounds hard. There are um, so many, so many ways that you can train yourself better in listening. Um, so if you just Google how to be a better listener, you will get tons of advice. Um, also, Amos and Allison put together a training on good listening, and I have their training paper. I made copies of it and put it out at the desk out there, the Welcome Center. So if you do want to take a quick like listening training paper, you can take that with you. I'm not going to offer much more advice other than that sounds hard is empathy gold. Um, but I do want to offer you a challenge and a like thought, a visual thought for you to take with you. So. I have this fence. It's actually a playpen, but just pretend it's a fence. And what I want you to do this week, right? This is your challenge. What I want you to do this week is, in your mind, when you are with someone close to you, or anyone, picture yourself in a fence. So I'm going in the fence, and the person talking to you is outside the fence, right? And so they're sharing with you. Picture yourself in the fence, in the fence, not many words are allowed. This is a quiet place, okay? This is a place where you come, shh, and just think before you speak, okay? Of course, Jesus is with you. You're not actually in this alone, and I'll get to that in a second. But you've got Jesus and you here. You can talk with Jesus if you need to, like, Jesus, help me. I don't know what to say, right? Or I don't know what to do. And just talk with Jesus in your mind, you and Jesus in your fence, your friend is talking to you. In this fence, the only thing allowed are those empathy gold phrases like, that sounds, or whatever, right? Like fill in the blank. Um, just repeat whatever they're saying. It's like, just be reflective. That sounds hard. Is the only thing allowed in here. Keep that in your mind. So your friend is talking to you. If you want to give advice, you're going to have to get out of the fence. Right? If you get out of the fence, now you can go and be like, oh, I went through that, blah, 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 and here's the best advice ever, blah, blah. But I pretty much want to guarantee your friend will shut down. Your friend will keep talking if you stay in here. Another good reason to stay in your fence, 
Um, if you're anything like me, um, you have a compassionate heart. And if you're too close to that person, you get so wrapped up in their emotions that you cannot disconnect. Often that will lead the conversation down this place towards anger because you're so into that person and you just want to fix it. And you just want, you don't want them to feel that, right? You just want to shake it out of them and you get too close. So sometimes it's really good to set a really healthy boundary and to say, nope, that person's feelings are theirs and my feelings are mine. And in order to be a good listener, you kind of have to separate yourself from them for a moment, right? So set a boundary. So this is your offense, you and Jesus. And this is a place where only empathy gold phrases are allowed and a place where you can separate yourself for a while from the situation. Okay, excellent. So my challenge for this week, try at least three times listening to someone using your empathy gold phrases, you're listening. Just picture yourself in the fence if you need to, to separate yourself from that person. Great. Now, switch gears a moment from happy human relationships, right? And I'll sum it up with happy, healthy relationships come from happy, healthy, good listeners. And now let's shift over to our relationship with God, because I will say one thing especially after my Friday phone call, I started to think like, oh my goodness, nothing really matters but God. <laughs> like really? All these things I'm worried about, none of it really matters but Jesus. And so we have to come back to Jesus. The only one, as our scripture today told us, the only one who really saves our souls. So take a moment now. What I want you to think about is you and Jesus in offense together. He is always, always with you. I learned something fascinating in my Greek class. So I'm in seminary, back to seminary, and I just finished two levels of Greek. And the most amazing thing I learned has everything to do with what I just said, that he never leaves you. So there's this fantastic, fantastic verse in the Bible. It's in two places. Hebrews chapter 13, it's also in Deuteronomy chapter 31. And the verse says, this is God speaking, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. But guess what? When you read it in its original Greek language, it really says, I will never, never leave you. No. I will never, never, never forsake you. There are that many emphatic negations in that verse. Never, 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 never going to leave you. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of Jesus that we have in our fence with us. He's never, 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 never going to leave you. That's our God, right? And he is the only one who can save our souls. And so you may have a million happy, healthy relationships, but if you do not have Jesus with you, that's sad, right? He, he came to rescue us, right? And so I just want to encourage you today, if, if you're struggling, maybe you're on the fence like, eh, I'm not really sure about this Jesus thing. Maybe like you're in your own fence and Jesus is over there and maybe he's coming toward you or you're going toward him, but you're not quite sure whether you want to invite him in. Don't wait. Life is way too short, right? Don't wait. I promise you, he is someone who loves you more than anyone ever could. Anyone. And he will never, never, never leave you. So what I want to do this morning is, um, as we wrap things up, the worship team is going to come up. I want us to spend just a moment in prayer. So if you will just close your eyes with me. I just want to lead you through a prayer. So Holy Spirit, I pray you would come. And Jesus, I pray right now that you would show us ourselves in a fence. 
whatever that looks like, Jesus, would you show us, give us a picture of us in a fence? And I pray right now, if you have not invited Jesus into your fence, if you have not decided yet that you want to have a relationship with him, then just say yes right now. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life. I want to follow you. Forgive me for all the things that I've done wrong and come in and rescue me. Jesus, I want to have a relationship with you, so join me in this fence. Talk with me. Listen to me. Love me. And Jesus would say back to you, I love you so much. And every day, I love when you invite me in. I love to hear you talk I will always listen to you. I will never, ever, ever leave you. So Jesus, would you come? Would you meet each one of these people in the fence? And as we leave just a moment for silence, Jesus, I pray you would say whatever you want to each person in their own fence. I just get the sense that some of you have so many burdens. It's like you're in the fence and your head is down and you are just weighted with so many hard things and they really are hard. And we just speak to you, Jesus, and I, we say, I'm so sorry, that is so hard. And Jesus, I pray that you would take those burdens so for every head that is bowed low, God, would you lift our heads and would you speak your truth to us that you're there, that you're here and you, you won't leave us. You'll walk these paths with us. You'll take the burdens for us and you'll carry them and you'll see us through. Jesus, I pray for more of your peace. I pray you would pour it out right now on every single heart. Every single burdened heart. God, would you fill it with your peace? I pray that you would bless each person in this room with an incredible ability to be a good listener. Would you pour it out, God? And I pray for more and more of your love. Amen. Let's worship. <laughs>